Hello everyone, this is the Biologist 13 again, and welcome to part 3 of the Custom Spawners tutorial. And in this part of the tutorial, we're going to go through a bunch of basic entity types with all these spawners that I have set up around here. And uh, we're also going to go through a few additional utility commands that I forgot in the last tutorial. So uh, the additional utility commands that I forgot are just slash cs, um, which just displays plugin info. And by the way, these ones that are prefixed with slash cs uh, will not work if you have world edit installed. You have to use its alias, which is slash cs plugin. Just add plugin at the end of there, and it'll work then. So I'll just show you that real quick. So I'll just show you that and links to the web page and whatnot. Uh, then there's also CS Reload, which just reloads all the spawners and entities that you've created. And sometimes that can fix little bugs if they occur. And finally, you have slash CS Help, and that just displays uh, the help messages for the plugin. And there's like 10, 12 pages of it because there's a freaking butt ton of commands. So, uh, yeah, so now that we're done with that boring stuff, uh, let's get right into spawners. So, uh, the first. Well, not spawners, but, you know, what entities, because that's what this tutorial is about. So the first entity property we're going to go through is color, and I have set up a little spawner right here to show it. So I'll just turn it on with slash CSS on, and then our ID number, which is 4. So in one second, we'll see some little butter sheep. Oh, God. That looks weird. <laughs> um, okay, there you are. So we have some butter sheep, because what I did is I did slash CSE color, and then I set this mob, which is ID4, to be yellow. And now we have butter sheep. Yeah. So there's our butter sheep. Um, then you also have a bunch of different properties that relate to uh, different, like, tamed mobs and stuff like that, like wolves and ocelots and stuff. So you can set them angry, you can set them sitting, you can set cat type, or you can set them tamed. So right here I have three spawners to demonstrate that, and I believe they are five, six, and seven. So we just do slash CSS on five, six, and seven. So we have angry wolf spawner, and then we have tamed wolf spawner, and they're all sitting down as soon as they spawn. And we also have a cat spawner. And custom spawners also has a unique feature where uh, <laughs> these ones that are spawning tamed animals, uh, they automatically bind themselves uh, to the nearest player and make them the owner, if that made any sense. So these guys are all under my control, so yeah. And they'll also teleport to me, so I'm going to have to remove all of them. Uh, so we'll just turn them off real quick uh, with CSS off. And oops, I can't control keyboard things. And I'll just do slash CSS, remove all mobs, like we were in the last tutorial. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at is slime size. So for that you can do slash CSE slime size and then the ID and then their number or the size. So one is like a baby slime that you see in uh, like caves or whatever. And then f I believe three is the maximum size that you'll see naturally spawning. But uh, custom spawner supports up to size 256. But I tried spawning that once and the server like died. So I don't recommend it. Uh, but I'll just turn this on so you guys can see. So as you can see, we have a baby slime. Two baby slimes. And I don't know why, but they all want to go south all the time. Because this is south if I hit F3. So, uh, that's those baby slimes. And I don't think I showed you the usage here. So, angry is just CSE angry, and then true or false. Uh, sitting is CSE sitting, the ID number, true or false. Cat type is slash CSE cat type ID and then the type which you can have like red, black, Siamese, or wild. And then you have tamed which is slash CSE tamed the ID number and true or false. So then we'll just remove or we'll just turn that spawner over there off because those guys will get annoying real fast. And we'll remove the mobs with rem mobs and then eight. They're all gone. And another unique feature you can have in custom spawners is you can have spider jockey spawners that will just spawn as a spider jockey. So for that, you do slash CSE jockey and then ID true or false. Or you can just create it directly with slash CSE create and then spider jockey. So I'll turn that on. Oops. So CSS on 9. And this guy will start spawning. And it's almost nighttime, which is perfect. 
So as you can see, we have Spider Jockey Spawner right here. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, the only thing that's a bit weird with them is spiders have weird hitboxes. So sometimes if they're in really close proximity like this, you'll occasionally get one phasing into a block. But it's usually not too much of a problem. I refined the algorithm a lot for this update. But anyway, enough with that. And Before they start escaping and terrorizing the world. Um, so we'll do slash CSS rem... There we are. Okay, so now you can also make charged creeper spawners with slash CSE charged and the ID number true or false. And they have to be a creeper. By the way, for like some of these specific properties like sheep, for example, they have to be a sheep to change the color. But anyway, let's turn this on. So it's spawner 10. So we'll see. We'll get some charged creepers here in a sec. I just had the delay set up pretty high for these. So yeah, as you can see, we have a charged creeper spawner and it will spawn charged creepers to terrorize the worlds that you're in. Yeah, I'm not going to hit any of them because that'd be freaking horrible. But, yeah. <laughs> so we'll turn that off and remove the mobs. Oops. Right about that. Alright. So next we have the fire ticks command. And fire ticks just basically allows you to turn on, like, how long they're on fire for. So... I think you'll like this one. So we do slash CSS on 11. So right here, we have these cows that basically spawn on fire. And they are on fire for a minute, but they only have four hit points of health. So they basically die instantly. And uh, it's a great steak farm, as you can see. <laughs> um, so we'll just throw that out. So we'll do slash CSS off then. Oops. And that's spawner 11. And then we remove the mobs from it. So yeah, it produces a lot of steak. So if you ever wanted to make a steak farm with custom spawners, this would be the way to do it. Um, and then you can also, another unique feature in custom spawners, is you can make it so a certain entity is passive, which means it will not attack you unless it is provoked, just like a wolf would be in the wild. So we're going to turn this one on with slash CSS on 12. And it's going to spawn some zombies. Uh, I'll switch to game mode too. And it's survival. Oh, ew. survival, evolve, evolve, evolve. All right. So as you can see, they're not tracking me at all. I can go reside with them if I would ever so please. Let's see if I can. No, oh, that's not going to be jumpable. One moment. And can I make this? Uh, wow, that was really pro of me, wasn't? Alright, so as you can see, I can be right in here with them. Nothing will happen. But as soon as I hit one... Oh, crap. Yeah, I have the health turned down on them. Because I'm... Not... Good at things. <laughs> so... Oh! Oh, God. Um, one moment. <laughs> Remember, kids. Creepers are terrible, and they'll eat your souls. Yeah. So now that we have all fixed, and yeah, and I'm back in creative mode, uh, we will move on to the next one. So this is the invincible property, which basically just makes it so whatever mob you're spawning is invincible to all types of damage ever of anything. And you do want to be careful with this property, though, because if you make it a normal mob spawner, not one that's managed by custom spawners, uh, unless you go into a third-party program like MC Edit, uh, you'll not be able to remove them because... Yeah, they won't be managed by custom spawners. So, I'll just turn this one on. So it's on, and then 13. And we'll get a little wolfy here. So, he's under my control, but he's also invincible to all types of damage. Nothing will hurt him at all, ever. So, that's cool. Um, uh, you guys can probably do some amazing stuff with that. Just, I don't know. I've seen some things on Reddit that are just like, follow you chest things. So, that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we'll move on to the next property now. Ooh, that's a naturally spawning one. Wow, well, I digressed really fast there. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the next property we're going to look at is the wither property, which allows you to make wither skeletons. So I'm going to turn this one on so you guys can see for yourself. So as you can see, we have some wither skeletons spawning here. And uh, yeah, wither skeletons, that's about it. Wither property, guys. So I'll just turn that one off because they scare me. Eh. 
All right. So now we've got all that. Uh, we saw this in the last tutorial also. This is the saddled property, which just allows you to make saddled pigs. So if we turn this guy on, we'll see that we have a bunch of saddled pigs spawning in this little pen. And uh, that's pretty cool. So we s went through all that in the last tutorial, though, and the usage for that is slash CSE, saddle, and then TRF. And most of these are true or false properties. If I go through here real quick, you can see that wither is a true or false property and invincible is a true or false property. So you basically just say what property you want to change and then the ID number if it you need to. Uh, if you have nothing selected, and then true or false. So now that we have all that, we're going to leave these pigs because they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll move to the next one. So this is a set type command, and this allows you to change the type of an entity. So, for example, I have a cow spawner here if I turn it on. We'll see. Yep. Wait. There we are. So we have a cow spawner here, but say we want a sheep spawner, or rather a chicken spawner. I don't have chicken spawners out here. So what we can do for that then is we can do slash CSC and set type. And then let's say we wanted these guys to be chickens. So this is ID two of a cow. And then we can set it to chicken. And now if we wait a sec, we'll see chickens will start spawning here instead. Oops. Oh, I have the wrong one selected. Uh, I th believe these guys are actually zero. Yes. And uh, the other one I have to set back to villager. Or... Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Uh... Alright. Uh, let me clear these guys. There we are. Okay, so as you can see, it changed the type of mob to a chicken, and the reason it didn't work for a second there, I think, is because it reached the mob cap, so it wasn't spawning chickens. But So we have it changed from a chi uh, cow spawner to a chicken spawner. So now over here, we have the zombie villager property, which allows you to make zombie villagers. So what you can do for that is it's just slash CSE zombie, and then true or false. So we'll turn this guy on. So on, and then I believe this is spawner zero. So these guys should start spawning any second. Oh, whoops. Uh, it wasn't a villager. They need to be a zombie. Zombie. Yes. Oh, <laughs> they're going to get ravaged. Oh, man. Oh, man. These guys are terrorizing the town. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, we're spawning villager zombies, so that's pretty cool. If you wanted to make a villager zombie spawner or zombie siege map, that's the way you'd do it. So, now that we have those guys, we'll move on to our final spawner of this tutorial. That is the villager profession property. And villager profession is anything like farmer or priest or butcher or any of those uh, villager profession type things. So yeah, let's turn this guy on. So it's slash CSS on three. Hey sheep. You look good today. That's oh yeah. So I have these ones set to be a butcher, and as you can see, they are spawning as butchers, and this has outrageous prices, and so do you. So, uh, yeah, that is the basic entity properties in custom spawners. And believe it or not, there is actually like ten or twenty more that you can set. Hey, well, maybe not twenty, but a lot nonetheless. And uh, we'll go over those in future tutorials along with all the extra properties that you can set to uh, normal mob spawners. So uh, yeah, until next time guys, I will see ya! Oh my god, this is intense. Oh, ow. Well, there. <laughs> huh, that worked.